Okay, here is a video about exponents and roots. Um, let's start with exponents. You know what an exponent is. If you had 3 to the second power, you know that that means 3 times itself twice. So that's going to be 9. Okay, and you probably also know what a root is, at least a square root. If you take the square root of 9, there's kind of a little implied 2 there, but not everybody writes it. Um, the square root of 9 is 3 because 3 times 3 is 9. So a root is kind of a way to undo uh, an exponent. So I guess without giving you official definitions of these two, that's kind of what they are. Okay, so let's do something else. Um, you might have access to uh, a TI-83 or 80-something. Um, you can use that on the ACT, so it's a good idea to be familiar with how this calculator works. Um, I went out and downloaded this one for free, so it's on my computer. Uh, you can get them for Android, too, on your phone or whatever. Uh, but chances are good that maybe your teacher can get a hold of one for you to play with while we watch this video. Or if not, that's that'll be fine, too. But let's just do a couple uh, operations with the calculator just to make sure we know what's going on. So let's say we had 4 to the 5th power. What would that be? That would be 4 times itself uh, 5 times. That's probably, you know, you could probably do this a couple times in your head, but once you get out here, you're like, uh, no. So you go to your calculator, and you put in 4. Uh-oh, i got to restart my calculator. You uh, put in your 4, and then this little hat thing, this little carrot here, that's to the power of. So 4 to the 5th power, and we get 1,024. Okay, so the opposite, or a way to undo this 4 to the 5th power would be to take our 1,024 and see if we could find the 5th root. Well, we know the answer uh, is going to be 4, because 4 times itself 5 times is that number. But on the calculator, we need to practice being able to do that. So the 5th root, how do you use this TI-83 to take a 5th root? Well, there's a button, the math button, and the fifth option down has an X next to this little radical symbol. I guess I probably should have told you this thing is called a radical. Okay, so I'm going to go down to that one right there. Whoops. I, I want the calculator, don't I? Uh, I'm going to go down to this one right here, but first I have to hit 5 because I want the fifth root. So I hit 5. Then I hit the math button, and then I go down to this one right here, hit enter. So I'm going to take the fifth root of 1,024, and I'm going to get 4. So the fifth root of 1,024 is 4. Why? Because 4 times itself 5 times is 1,024. So you should definitely practice, as I practice this, you should be playing with the calculator if you have one, so you'll be more ready when you take the ACT. So where do I want to go next? What I want to do next is I'm going to pick a number, I think I'm going to pick 3, and I'm going to do uh, an operation to it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, and that would be 3 to the 4th power. I think I probably can manage doing that in my head. Let's try 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 is 3 shy of 30. So 30 times 3 is 90. Take away that 9. That should be 81. Okay. Uh, in case you don't trust me or don't trust yourself, let's do this. Let's go 3 to the 4th power, and we get 81. Okay. So 3 to the 4th power is 81. Just to go uh, to repeat what we did before, what if we wanted to take the 4th root of 81? We want to find out what number times itself 4 times is 81. Well, we know it's going to be 3, but just humor me. So I'm going to hit the 4 button, and then I'm going to hit the math button, 
and I'm going to go down to the fifth option, x, and then the radical. So I'm going to take the fourth root of 81. The fourth root of 81 is 3. So the fourth root of 81 is 3. Now, you might not like that. You might not like you know using that math function on here and writing this radical. Maybe that frightened you. So there is another way to do it. We can actually kind of sidestep this whole root thing. And how do we do that? We do that with fractional exponents. So just an exponent is telling you how many times you're going to multiply a number by itself. In this case, it was 3 uh, to the fourth power. Well, what if we had 81? We're, we're going to kind of do the root thing. But we didn't multiply it by a whole number. We multiplied it by itself a fraction of times. So what if we did this 81 to the 1 fourth power? what do you suppose we would get? Well, let's do that. And remember, 1 fourth is the same thing as 0.25. I'll do it both ways. So let's do this. Let's hit clear. Let's go 81 to the, and so I don't confuse the calculator, I'm going to put my 1 fourth in parentheses. 1 divided by 4. So 81 to the 1 fourth power is 3. So I got the same thing I got over here except I didn't use the radical thing to do it. I just used a fractional exponent. So uh, let's do it again with 0.25 instead of 1 fourth. So let's go 81 to the 0.25 power. We get 3. Okay, so that's, that's kind of a nicer, I think it's a more elegant way to do it. I just think it's a little bit cleaner. But hey, that's just me. So does that mean that, like let's say we had uh, uh, 25 to the one half power. Would that be the same thing as saying the square root of 25? Well, it should be, right? Because one half power is, you know, 25 times itself half of a time. So let's let's do that. Let's go 25 to the, put my parentheses, one half power, and I get 5. So 25 to the one half power is 5. And just for giggles, let's go the square root of 25. I get 5. So basically, I, I know I'm repeating myself, but if you use a fractional exponent, you can get around having to do this, you know, fourth root, fifth root stuff. So on your note sheet for this video, there are some problems to try. Uh, your teacher has an answer key, so... Um, Let's take a few minutes, we'll pause the video now, and we'll do those problems, and then we'll come back when we're all set. So just to finish up with a little, a little housekeeping and maybe a little bit more thinking, what do, you, what do you suppose if we had 2 cubed and we took the, the third root of that, 2 to the third power, but we took the third root, what do you suppose that would be? Any guesses? Well, the answer would be two because third root and third power they would undo each other and we would just be left with the two okay um, thinking thinking along those lines then what if what if we had uh, two cubed to the third power what do you suppose that would give us two to the third power to the third power that makes me wonder. Let me go to my calculator here, and I'm going to do 2 to the third power, and I get 8, and then I take that to the third power. And what do I get? I get 512. So, hmm, how can, how can I make kind of a rule here? What did 2 to the what led to the 512? So let's try, let's try adding these, 2 to the 6. Let's see what that gives us. So let's go 2 to the 6th power. That gives us 64. Okay, so that doesn't do it. Let's try multiplying those two. 2 to the 3 times 3 is 9. Let's see what that gives us. So 2 to the 9th power gives us 5, 12. Okay, so based on this little experiment we just did, we learned that if you have a power to a power, you multiply them. Okay? Okay, I'm almost done. Just one last little housekeeping bit here. What, let's say I had negative 2 
squared and then I took the square root of that, or the second root. Do you suppose my answer would just be negative 2? Y you might think that based on the last example I did, but unfortunately that's not the case because check this out. Negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2, and that is 4. Okay, so then the square root of 4 is 2. So this cannot equal negative 2. It just can't be. So that's kind of a weird little bit of, uh, of mathematical trivia, I guess. But then you might wonder, well, what if I took, uh, what if it wasn't squared? What if it was cubed? What if it was negative 2 to the third power? And what would that be? That would be negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. That would be uh, negative 8, wouldn't it? But what happens if we try and take the square root of a negative number? Let's see here. Second square root of negative 8. Let's see what we get. You just can't do it. So uh, a lot of textbooks will say, well, whenever you do this root stuff, um, we're assuming that you have a positive number in the radical. But I think that's a little bit farther than we need to go in this video, so I'm going to stop right there.